Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the last event of the German British Society for this year. Um, and a very special one too, because um, it's going to be another political um, topic that we're going to discuss. Just um, a couple of household remarks. Number one is that as usual, the whole session will be recorded. And number two, you're very welcome to join the discussion. And if you'd like to do so, please just enter whatever you'd like to contribute in the chat function. That makes it easier later to sort of sort it out a little bit according to the topics that you are raising. Now, what are we going to hear about tonight? Um, as you all know, Germany has always been a federal country. Is a, is a, federalism is, is a strong component of German political um, culture and has been for many centuries. And indeed, the Federal Republic of Germany is composed of the original 11 and now 16 states. The basic sovereignty rests with the states and they make up the Federal Republic. Until the 1990s, it was the only federal um, uh, country in the European Union and was often derided. People were saying, you know, you never achieved full, uh, full nation state and things like that. Um, this has changed considerably within the European Union. We have other um, federal countries like Belgium and Spain with considerably more power vested with the, um, with the states than with the federal government. Um, even uh, traditionally very centralized countries like France and Italy have created regions and are gradually assembling more and more political power with these regions. If we look outside the European Union, we have the United States, of course, which is federalist. We have Brazil, we have India and, and lots of other countries that show us that the nation state is not the only sort of alternative in setting up uh, politics. Now, the United Kingdom until quite recently, until about 20 years ago, was um, very much a central state. Then gradually, um, the sort of uh, political speech uh, changed and, and one began to talk about the four nations within the United Kingdom. And then devolution came along, but my impression is it sort of stopped at um, halfway. Um, Scotland and then Wales gained a certain amount of independence, but it wasn't um, uh, perhaps thought through to the very limits. And England remained the same as the original United Kingdom. And now the Liberal Party has come in and proposed a pretty radical uh, solution. And I'm very happy to welcome Poubre here with us tonight, who was on the committee, if I understand correctly, to uh, that worked out um, this proposal. And then she actually proposed the motion that was adopted at the Liberal Party conference. And she will tell us what this Liberal proposal um, looks like, and then we'll be able to, to discuss it. Um, uh, Prue speaks excellent German, but it was us who insisted that she should speak English, because it's sort of our tradition that we do these things in English, she has many ties to both Germany and other, other European countries. And we're very happy to have her here with us tonight. Prue, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. And uh, thank you very much for not making me speak German. <laughs> yeah. um, good evening, everybody. I'm very pleased to be here. Let me tell you something, 30 seconds about myself. I've been a Liberal Democrat for, um, nearly 30 years now um, and I joined the party because I got rather cross. I was always shouting at the radio when the news came on about the things I didn't like that were going on in politics and so I decided that the only way to deal with that was to uh, join a political party and try to do something about it myself. Um, so I have gone on from, from there and I now find myself in the position of being the vice chair of the Liberal Democrats in England. Um, as well as a, I'm, I'm a councillor um, in a local authority, in England, a council, um, local government uh, person. I have been for 20 years. Um, and I am very interested in how England and Scotland and Wales and Northern Ireland govern themselves. And so I got involved in our working group. So 
Um, let me tell you a little bit about the Liberal Democrats first and why this is a topic that we are interested in. So we are a party where um, our identity is in our name, we are liberal and we are democratic. Um, and we have a constitution as a party, um, which was laid out when we were formed in the 1980s. And um, in there, um, we, we have a preamble that says um, that we exist to build and safeguard a fair, free and open society. Um, and that's one of the things that people often quote. But further down in that preamble, and, and right important to us right from the start of our party, is it says, we determined to strengthen the democratic process and ensure there is a just and representative system of government with effective parliamentary institutions, freedom of information, decisions taken at the lowest practical level and a fair voting system for all elections. And it also says that we believe that sovereignty rests with the people and that authority in a democracy derives from the people. We therefore acknowledge their right to determine the form of government best suited to their needs and commit ourselves to the promotion of a democratic federal framework within which as much power as feasible is exercised by the nations and regions of the United Kingdom. And in that case, nations means England, Scotland, Northern Ireland and Wales. We similarly commit ourselves to the promotion of a flourishing system of democratic local government in which decisions are taken and services are delivered at the most local level, which is viable. So as a party, we have this um, thing, it's in our DNA that we want uh, a democratic system, which is federal for the United Kingdom, and which power is passed down to the lowest possible level. Um, and at the moment, we have a situation in the United Kingdom in which a certain amount of power has been devolved from Westminster to the three um, states which are not England, um, whereas England is kind of conflated with the United Kingdom as a whole. So if you're elected as an MP to Westminster, um, you have um, uh, the right to vote on legislation for the whole of the United Kingdom and for England. Um, but you do not have the right to vote on legislation that is part of the, the de devolution. So you can't vote on some legislation for Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. However, a Scottish, Welsh or Irish MP elected to Westminster can vote on English laws that apply only to England because there is no English dimension. Um, and this is a problem for us. And it's a big problem because England is so much bigger than the other three states. So we have a completely lopsided situation of three small nation states relative to the size of England and one very large one, which, uh, which the government tends to consider itself um, the government of England and the government of the United Kingdom and conflates the two ideas. Um, and we have a huge amount of over centralization. As a result of that, we have um, decreasing powers for our local government tier. Um, and um, the money is all concentrated in the hands of the government in, in Whitehall. In, in Westminster. So uh, whatever powers the local government does have, it can't really exercise anything because it has no power over the money. So this has led us to a situation, and it's particularly stark at, at the moment, where um, having an over-centralised government has led to very poor decision making because it cannot take account of the requirements of the different regions of, of England. Um, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland are better off because their decision making is closer to the people. And as I say, as a party, we believe very strongly that decision making should be close to the people because that's where you, the way you get the best decisions. Um, and so we set out to um, develop a policy which tried to deal with some of these issues. Uh, it's a very complicated thing to try to deal with. And in fact, our party has been trying to develop this policy since we were formed in the 1980s. And in fact, the Liberal Party, which was our predecessor, started on it in the 1960s. So um, it has become more pressing because of the situation, because of Brexit and the damage that is being done to our country by our current government. Um, the fact that we don't have any form of written constitution, which means that everything relies on what in England we call a gentleman's agreement. 
So you shake hands and you rely on the other person to carry out what they've said. And that only works if everybody's a gentleman. And I'm afraid the people we have in government at the moment are not gentlemen. And I'm sure you're aware of a number of the things that have been said and done by this government, which are not, um, I hope I put it, which turned out not to be quite true or, or quite straightforward. Uh, um, and then it, it has been very difficult and it's very worrying some of the things they're trying to do. So even at the moment, they are drawing up proposals to consider how they might overturn decisions of the courts that they don't like as the government. So the only thing we have at the moment is that we, we have a legal system where um, the, the final decisions of the, of the Supreme Court are, are the decision that the government has to abide by. And that was something that we thought had been settled by our civil war in, in the 17th century. And when Charles I went and Oliver Cromwell said, we got rid of the divine right of the rulers to do what they wanted. They had to be governed by the rule of law. Um, and this government is even seeking to overturn that. So um, that is very deeply worrying. Um, so on top of the fact that we're over centralized, that we're getting bad decisions. So for example, dealing with the pandemic, all the good decisions on how to cope with um, what's going on have been made by local government or by the, the mayors in various cities and so on. And all the bad decisions and the things that have failed and all the money that's been wasted has all been done by central government. Um, and if that's not a lesson to us, I think um, we're never going to learn it. Um, so we set out, as I said, as a party to try and do something about this. And we set up, um, about three years ago, some people to look at what should happen to Scotland, because obviously the Scottish National Party is pushing very hard for independence, whereas we are a party that believes in a federal United Kingdom and wish Scotland to remain with us. Um, and we will be very sad to see it depart, although we can understand why they might not be very keen on things at the moment. Um, and so our Scottish party, uh, um, uh, had some proposals for what should be further devolved to Scotland and how they might act in a federal um, system. But then we realised that we had to really get on and do something about the position of England because it is so dominant and um, we've got this problem which in England is, uh, or United Kingdom is called the West Lothian question, which is the one I described to you about the MPs from Scotland and Wales being able to vote on English legislation but English MPs can't vote on some of the legislation in the other countries. So they set us this task to find a, a formula, a policy for how we could develop um, England. And that culminated after a year's work um, of a, a working group of about 20 party members with various sorts of expertise in the policy motion that I presented at the, our federal conference in autumn, uh, September uh, this year. Um, and it was passed, I'm very pleased to say, um, and so has become our adopted policy. And it's essentially a policy of regionalization um, because that is really the only thing you can do. We do not wish to abolish England as a thing. It still has to exist as a state um, because there are a number of things where it would not make sense to get rid of the entire country. So our legal system, we would not want to have a regional legal system across the regions of England. Um, we have a separate, uh, this may not be known to people, Scotland has its own legal system. Mm -hmm. um, Wales is essentially the same as England. Um, it has a different history, but it's, it's basically it's the same. Um, and um, the Liberal Democrats don't actually operate in Northern Ireland. So uh, we have a sister party called the Alliance Party that operates there. So we, our policies don't cover Northern Ireland in the same way. Um, so we'd want a legal system that was common to the whole of England. We'd probably want some other things that need to be common to England. And clearly there are some things which need to be dealt with at a United Kingdom federal level. So we tried to identify what those things were at each level, which things then belong at, at a regional level and um, which things should be devolved even further than that um, to the local government, so your local councils. The things we have not identified <laughs> in this policy is how many regions there should be. And there's a reason for that, 
Um, I think we've decided not too many. And the, the idea that many of us had in mind when we put the policy together was roughly um, the areas that used to be the um, MEP areas. So we had um, nine uh, in England, nine sets of, uh, of MEPs. And so nine regions looked about right. Um, but obviously we're not in the European anymore, Union anymore. And while inside our own party, it's very good to refer to that externally, it may not be quite so favorably received by some people. Um, it will be something like that, but we do have concerns at, at the moment. The government has moved to sort of regionalization with what we call metro mayors. So, for example, Manchester, big cities, London has its own central thing. Um, Manchester, Liverpool, um, there's, there's seven of them all together. Um, some of them are uh, Bristol, for example, where they're now reconsidering whether they want to have one. They will be having a referendum next May, possibly to get rid of their, their mayor. Um, there's one in Birmingham. There's one up in the northeast, um, which is these. Tees Valley sort of area. Um, but they that only works in cities. So one of our concerns is that if you don't do the regions properly, the rural areas will get overwhelmed by the cities and won't get a proper look in or a proper look at resources. So, um, and we didn't want to force people into a region. Uh, I don't know whether people are aware, in, in about 2003, when there was a Labour government in the UK, Labour were considering regionalisation. And they had already established um, the civil service to be organised in a regional way with government offices, so the government offices of the South East and so on, the government offices of the South West. And they had a referendum on having um, an assembly for the North East. So, uh, a sort of regional parliament area. It was massively defeated in a referendum. And the reason it was massively defeated was it was sold by the Conservatives as something to uh, people to um, give politicians more, more money, have more politicians waste a lot of money, an extra tier of government, it's all a waste of time. Um, and it all fell over um, catastrophically. We don't want to repeat that. And we don't want to impose it from the centre either, because that was another problem that people were saying, but we don't belong with those people over there. Why do you want to put us in a region with them? Um, so we had in mind something which is more um, able to, people able, in a particular area, able to define their own region. So if a particular, we probably assemble it out of the building blocks of local authorities, but if a particular local authority wanted to be in the region next door, we couldn't see a problem with that, provided that that's democratically arrived at. So it's it's a, a movable feast. And while we were planning all this, we did look very hard at Germany, at, at your um, lender and, and at your the way the Bundesrat operates. And it's quite interesting that you don't, as far as I'm aware, have parliamentary terms for the Bundesrat, do you? It's a kind of ongoing thing. Um, we were looking at how we would take account of this region in our parliamentary system because we have two levels of parliament uh, we have the house of commons which is the mps and we have the house of lords which is one of the very few um unelected bodies that has a role in parliament and it's a disgrace to be honest um so we were thinking about what would our second chamber look like and we looked at the bundesrat as a model um, and something not dissimilar. I think we would have some form of regional representation and that's what our conference voted for, um, was to have the regions being the equivalent of England, uh, of, of Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland um, with some overarching English things. I, mean, I think the football team will probably be English. You know, universities will probably be done on an, England, an all England level. Um, we're not so clear, but probably the NHS would remain as a United Kingdom thing, but there would be mainly regional control and some English, you know, those kind of things. A lot more would be devolved to the regions, but the regions will come together in that second chamber. Um, and unlike our House of Lords, which doesn't really have any powers to overturn the Commons, uh, it has some, but they're very limited, uh, this would be a proper de democratic chamber. And we would want a written constitution because we do not have a written constitution um, and our rights are not established uh, except in the Human Rights Act, which is an act of parliament, which again, this government is currently considering overturning. 
doing away with the Human Rights Act, um, which is just not a path that we wish to embark on as, as the Liberal Democrats. So in order to do all that, that's quite a lot of work to get the country to change its entire parliamentary system. Um, so we'd have something called a, a UK um, constitutional convention, which is basically bringing people together, experts together and, and other people to give their opinion and, and build it. And it would take some years because change is difficult. Um, but we can see a situation in which you would have um, a separate so the MPs would be sitting in the House of Commons doing the UK legislation. You would have a separate chamber which consists of regional representatives and they would be dealing with the things that affected their regions and in England they would come together as bits of England to do the England things. The MPs would do the whole federal state. They would not, so, so they would be all equal then and we would overcome this issue of not having an English parliament that's equivalent of the Scottish parliament and the, and the Welsh assembly. Um, and um, local government would also get more powers and more, and would be able to work within their regions. So we think it will work. We think it would be fairly popular, actually, at the moment, because of the way that the current government is carrying on. Um, whether, especially if, if not now, when um, this is this is the time for this sort of thought, um, and. Uh, as I say, our conference passed it overwhelmingly. We now have uh, working on more of the detail about how we bring the constitutional convention together, what the re what size the regions would be, and what mechanisms we would have for forming the regions in the first place. Uh, but it's been a very interesting journey that we've been on uh, as a party. Um, we started off in two camps in the working group, one who wanted to abolish England altogether, and one who didn't want to abolish England at all. And we've come together in a way uh, by thinking about it to a solution that works for all of us. Uh, and we were very pleased to see that our conference of party members welcomed it. And that is how we form our policy in our party, that, that our, all our members of our party are free to come to the conference. And in fact, we've been holding them virtually, so more people are, are able to attend at the moment. They have a vote as a member party member, um, and uh, they voted for this. And they voted. We gave them some options about what the second house should look like and what um, whether they wanted it to be England or or the regions. That was the um, the overarching thing, and they settled on the regionalisation. So um, we're looking forward to further policy development, and there's more things will be coming back in the future. <laughs> Well, thank you very much indeed. This has been an extraordinarily interesting uh, picture you've drawn for us. And um, at the end of the discussion, we might um, spend a minute or two to talk about whether, whether there is a chance that this could actually fly. Um, yes. I have one or two. I have one or two comments, and then we, we're, we're getting some questions and comments in the in the chat. So I'll, um, I'll refer to that in a moment. Um, first of all, I'd just like to remind you that for a very long time, until mm -hmm. until uh, 1932, to be quite correct, um, we had this situation in Germany of one overbearing, very large state, and then a lot of much smaller ones. Um, Prussia was two thirds of the of the territory, and I think an even larger share in the population of of, mm. of Germany, and that did lead to an awful lot of problems. And while in theory um, there was a division between Prussia and and uh, the Reich, the central government, in practice there was not. So so of course it, people were ministers for both, and 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 mm. a lot of things sort of got mixed up. Um, so. I'm, I'm sure you're right in saying that 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 the the regions or whatever have to be of a somehow comparable size in order for the whole system um, uh, uh, to work. Now the Bundesrat in in Germany is made up of the governments of the mm. um, uh, six, now sixteen um, states, and so. When a government changes in a, in one of the states, then obviously we get new people in the Bundesrat. So, so there's no need for a sort of term of office for the Bundesrat as such. The chair is taken on by 
or one of the prime ministers it goes i think it goes by the alphabet or something every year every year we get a new one um so um, but that does mean of course that the bundesrat although it does have uh, quite considerable powers it can overturn um decisions mm -hmm. um in practice it's it it's not as strong as it could be because of the political parties that obviously reach out into the state so a lot of things are, are divisive on a party uh, uh, line much more than on a line sort of federal against state or something like that mm. but anyway um um it's it's worked quite well now for for um what 70 or more than 70 years right um let's um take a question or two from from the floor um and there is one from um Thomas Kuhn, who says, would your second chamber be the English equivalent of the Scottish Parliament and the Welsh and Northern Ireland assemblies? Uh, sort of is the answer <laughs> to that. Um, so um, there is a need for, uh, we don't want to invent a lot of extra political posts because it's unpopular to have lots of politicians and it also, um, if we're going to sell this to people as a policy, we need to stress the fact that it's better government, not more government. Um, how, how we haven't defined it strictly, but I think how we were thinking is that there would be that the people who would be voting on those issues, you would have Scottish, Welsh, Northern Irish, and regional representation in that second chamber, and they would vote on the bits that affected them. So if it didn't affect you you wouldn't get a vote on it. Does that, does that make sense? Unless it was an overarching thing, which mm -hmm. affected everybody, you'd, you'd have a vote. So um, the English regions would be voting on the English things and the Scottish and Welsh would, would not vote in those things. Um, we haven't written that down. Uh, this was, we thought we'd gone far enough this stuff and getting this far, having it with the party having been trying for, as I say, essentially actually since the 1960s before our, our current party would try and come up with something that would work. Um, we got quite a long way down the track, but that, that's kind of how it works. So to, to have a body in which the, who could vote on the issues would vary according to what the issue was. Um, and I may say in, uh, your point about the Bundesrat is quite right, but but, to us, it looks like heaven from where we are now. <laughs> so um, it, it would be it would be a very different way of us doing things. Where yeah. we, you know, yeah. Um, I'm I'm not quite sure whether I second that remark about heaven. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> um, and my, and, and mind you, especially when in times of crisis yes. like like uh, pandemics and things. There's mm -hmm. always been a strong movement to give more power to the federal government and mm -hmm. to because I mean, dealing with with the pandemic was at the outset was quite clearly um, a constitutional issue um, in that it was the state's job to deal with it. And mm -hmm. but very soon the federal government stepped in because and 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 that was quite popular with the people because they felt mm -hmm. it should be a sort of uniform German um, um, arrangement. Because I mean, people thought, you know, why should I? Um, I don't know, have one set of rules in Berlin and then I go to Potsdam and have yes. a different set of rules or something like that. Yes, which is quite interesting because yeah. in, in the United Kingdom, we've gone the other way and Scotland yeah. and Wales and Northern Ireland and England all have different rules. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm not sure whether it works or not, um, but, but that's the way we've gone. Yeah, yes. yeah. but I think that's that's probably one of the, one of the trickiest yes. um, uh, issues yeah. to deal with. Mari, you had a, a question or comment. Yes, we, you know, talking about big changes, I was wondering uh, whether you would also consider switching from first past the post to proportional oh, yes. representation, if you okay. could. That, uh, we'd, I think we might have put that in the motion, but that in the Liberal Democrats, that goes without saying. We, mm -hmm. we would switch to a single transferable vote. That, that would be our, uh, we propose that for every form of government um, um, and always have. Um, um, what we're really saddened is that the few things where we've managed to get a bit more proportionality, for example, um, we have um, some London elections and we have these things, unnecessary things, called police and crime commissioners who are elected on a, uh, an alternative vote system. So the last two go into the, the final count. 
the Conservatives are proposing even to do away with that and to go back to first past the post because that uh, there's not very many countries left that use first past the post. Um, and we think it's a dreadful system. Uh, and it, obviously, I, it's a struggle to get rid of it because both the biggest parties in the United Kingdom benefit for it, from it mm. because they, it gives them a majority of the votes and keeps them as the most two most um, yeah. prominent parties. So they've got no interest in getting rid of it. So it's it's a struggle, but it's not first past the post is dreadful, absolutely dreadful. It oh. provides safe seats, and that's really the worst thing that we've got an awful lot of politicians elected to Westminster who don't have to fight, do anything for, to keep their seat. Mm -hmm. and, and therefore the party influence is even greater the, than it would be in Germany. Mm -hmm. as well, yeah. Yeah. well, we have the same same mm -hmm. issue here, really, that a lot of backbenchers mm -hmm. Um, yeah. they're, they're, you know, they're elected on a party list, and, and mm -hmm. nobody, nobody ever, ever knows them really. I mean, you know, no. they, they don't feel a responsibility towards their their own electorate or anything, you know, because they've, no. they've got in on the list, and and um, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it does, of course, give people a chance who are probably good, good at being members of parliament, and probably even good members of a government, but are not very good at campaigning, um, yep. gives them a chance, which is probably a good thing. Yes. Mm. Because not yes. all good campaigners uh, are good, in, good parliamentarians. Yeah. In my own view, the, the, the thing that makes the difference is that under a, that sort of system, you can vote for who you want. Yes. Whereas in our system, you have to vote against who you don't want. Yeah. And that, well, that was that was the general feeling in, yes. in, in the run up to our recent mm -hmm. election that nobody really wanted to or thought he could he or she could vote for the party they wanted. They all voted for the party they disliked <laughs> least. You know, so, um, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Uh, this is so, a, no. yeah, yeah. No. Um, I, I would still invite other people to come in with questions and, and comments of any kind. And I, I, them all. <laughs> and I just, I, I, have, I have one because you said um, what hasn't been decided is how many regions and yes. what, they should, what they should look like. Um, yes. Well, one question is um, beyond being sort of more or less like the constituencies of the, of the, yes. of the European Parliament, what, what what, what other ideas could there well, be? We looked at a yeah. number of different things. Mm. Um, so um, we, we looked at basing it on our county councils. I don't know how much you know about English local government. Um, and I mean English, not, not as well. So we have counties and they have mostly they have a county council and underneath them they have a, um, a set of smaller councils that do so. So the county councils do education, adult social care, um, they do um, all children's social care, they do roads, um, mm. all, all the big things, whereas the district councils underneath will do the planning applications for houses and um, collecting your rubbish, yeah. and things like that. Um, and a system which was built on counties might work, but not all the counties are quite big enough, we felt, to become a region. We also have these things which in some areas have replaced county and district councils which are unitary authorities so that it combines both things together um, and i'm actually a unitary authority councillor um, it works much better to have everything combined in one council because you can everything interacts so you don't have to go somewhere else to mm. sort something out um, but um it, it's unpopular with the councils and the, <laughs> the county councils and the district councils because the councillors don't want to lose <laughs> their, their ability to get elected to those councils. So um, I think it's coming, but we have, it's, it's an irregular patchwork and we also have these city mayors. Um, and so a city could be a region, but what do you do then with the countryside around the cities? Mm. So something that's more of a mixture between metropolitan areas and non-metropolitan areas looks better. And we'd have to build in some sort of safeguard about funding, because obviously, uh, and again, Germany, parts of the country are far more deprived than other parts of the country. No. So you have to have a mechanism for uh, collecting the taxes and we'd have tax raising mainly still kept at a, a federal or all England level. Um, 
to do redistribute that. So we call that equalization. So you, you pass the area. So London, which has a vast tax revenue, would have to sacrifice some of that money for some of the areas in the north, which have um, much more deprivation and the inability mm. to raise taxes. Otherwise, you'd have an unbalanced country. Yeah. And that's why we think that our proposal would enable the levelling up that the government keeps talking about, where they're trying to do something about deprivation. At least they say they are. I, I, I presume they are. I can't imagine they would be set out to increase deprivation. Mm. But they don't have any mechanisms, any levers to pull to do it. Whereas mm. if you actually have a regional model which allows you to pass the money around the regions, you, you can do it in a much more sensible way and you get the regional buy-in um, for, for doing that. And we've had subsets of that, for example, in our council housing, our, our social housing used to work a bit like that. It all went a bit wrong because it wasn't properly thought out, but it, it was something no, else. No. So it's continued to have tax raising done centrally, but distribution done more fairly. Um, mm. And then you could work out a formula by which the rural areas would get a, a particular percentage of that tax to, to account for the fact that they were rural and things cost more to provide there and so on for head of population. No. Um, and we do some of that in our current funding of mm. local government. Mm. Um, so, that, you know, it's something that we, we're used to yeah. doing. Yeah. But, but, but how but, many? I mean, yeah. well, yes. But, but, yeah. <laughs> But there is a caveat to all that. I don't think you yes. will solve the whole problem by in, sort of, you know, by, by creating a sort of clean structure, sort of with, with everything in no. order. We have uh, ongoing problems with our, our federal system and, and things. We do have a rule that the um, larger states um, have to support the, the, the weaker yeah. ones. We have a sort of mechanism um and um um there's there's always a lot of fighting because of course the, the states that have to give money don't really want to and, and so there's always a lot yeah. of, and we have big differences in size and in in and in mm. sort of uh, stability of states i mean yes uh north rhine westphalia and bavaria are probably the largest um and mm. then uh, if you look at um, i don't know Thuringia or, or saar or something they're much 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 smaller and yes. much, much much weaker so uh, we, we also have this problem of, of cities and and, mm. and so on. We do have, I think it's nine or ten metropolitan regions in Germany, which mm. are a sort of separate uh, structure, um, mm. so sort of Munich and Nuremberg and and, and so on, um, and, and that works quite well when it, as long as it's sort of administrative matters, it works. Mm very badly when it comes to matters where the citizens need to be involved because they're obviously then the big cities will dominate whatever yes. whatever there is yes. and 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 the citizens who live in the in the smaller towns around it will always feel that um, um yes. they're getting a, a worse deal or something yes yes so no, it's, absolutely. It, it, i think it's an ongoing it's it, that will always be in sort of an ongoing debate on, mm. on, redistribution and, and, uh, and fairness. Yes. One of the things we thought of was to have a separate body that's responsible outside the government for looking at the distribution of the money mm -hmm. so that it was taken out of the political arena and given to effectively to, to officials to, to do rather than uh, because mm -hmm. we thought although there's still the possibility of influence from the current governments or whatever yeah. Yeah. it would be reduced compared yeah. to actually giving okay. it letting them do it and the one thing we would not want would be the federal government of the day being able to change things to suit itself. Yeah, yeah. Mm. There's a question here. Ah, oh, that's quite a tricky one from Lauren. Have you considered the relationship to the Isle of Man? Actually, we have. Ah! <laughs> and, and we've considered the relationship to the Channel Islands. Okay. Which are some of these things. So we have, and, and even Gibraltar, we have considered. Uh -huh. um, so, um, there, there are things called crown dependencies, which is a slightly different thing. Um, and what we what we decided when we considered them, they have their own governments, and they would have to be allowed to be con to have their own governments in perpetuity. But they they don't actually 
they are separate. Although they're part of the United Kingdom, they do have their, they don't have MPs in the same way in the same mm. sort of thing, in, in, for example, the Channel Islands. Um, they have a relationship where the Queen is their sovereign and we kind of negotiate with them about everything else. <laughs> so um, we decided that Crown dependencies and the Isle of Man and so on would come in the second phase, I'm afraid. <laughs> mm. So we would not want to tamper with them as they are, um, but how they would integrate into that, I don't know. And it would be up to them, I think. Um, our view was people should not be forced to do something, that if they wish to belong, then we should maybe allow that. Mm -hmm. um, but at the moment, for example, the Channel Islands are very fiercely independent, and so is really the Isle of Man, although it, it seems like it's more part of everything but, it, but it's because they still speak English. There was the Channel Islands. You've got a very uh, French influence. Um, they're kind of kind of involved, and they're kind of not. So it's it's a bit like some of the French territories, like Reunion and so on. Mm -hmm. um, um, they're kind of outside outside. The, we we were our main task was to look at England. So yeah. we looked at England. Yeah. 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 Yes. And of course, I mean, Réunion is the other side of the globe and, and, and the Isle of Man is... Yes, is, is, it's quite close yeah. by. Yes, I've never <laughs> been there, mind you. But it's, it's, um, yes. it's a very interesting place. Yeah. Um, I think we've got a question in the q and Yes, there's another question that yes. says, is there any support from Conservative or Labour already? Right. So in this the end, sorry to say, there is either a Tory or <laughs> Labour government. Yes. yes. So there is some support from, from the Labour Party who have started doing their own work on this. And we took what they had done. They, they'd done a, a, a paper on it earlier this year, which we took into account when we did it. So their thinking is not miles apart from us on regionalization, that, and, and it hasn't been for some time. I think we're quite reasonably uh, aligned and have been for the last 20 years that regionalization needed to be built on as a concept. Um, it's not exactly the same, but they are also thinking of a UK constitutional convention to settle these matters. Um, so I think there's a fair amount of alignment. So if we were to get a Labour government, I think there's a fair chance of getting some influence and, and some assistance, getting something through to actually happen. Conservatives are implacably opposed to, mm. to devolving power to anybody. They are introducing these metro mayors and so on. and and more unitary authorities and things, but it's in a way that doesn't give the power away from Westminster or the money, the control, even when they say you've got the power to do something, because they hold on to the control of the purse strings, you can't actually do anything without yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. But, but I am hopeful. I mean, I, I can't see us. We won't have a Conservative government forever. We will eventually get a Labour government <laughs> or a more, a different government. Um, and um, because other states have gone this way, I think it is likely that that this is the tide of history, as it were. Yeah. Um, yeah. Though I am worried about the rise of the nation state and nationalism as a concept, yeah. um, which seems to be happening in a lot of places, very unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that, that is quite obvious that there is a sort of general trend of regionalizing mm. uh, government. Um, mm. You can see that everywhere. And um, um, even much smaller countries are, are talking about it because they feel that the national government um, mm. is is no longer able to to cope with the with the actual sort of issues on hand. Yes, of course. I mean, we we always learned that the nation state was a sort of anthropological constant, which of course it is not. It's it's, no. an, it's a 16th right. century invention, and. Yes. After five centuries, you know, we could just as well do away with it again. It's, it's, we, it's very interesting. I mean, it's, it's, better. Yeah. yeah, it's easier, in, I think, in the mainland of Europe to, yeah. to see the movement of peoples around over history. Whereas if you live on an island like we do, you tend to think that you are a defined state because you're defined yeah. by the fact the sea is all around you. But actually, if you look at our history, um, for example, the north of Scotland was part of Norway for quite <laughs> several hundred years. <laughs> so um, we've, we've got um, we've got a funny idea about about um, particularly I think it applies to the English have got a funny idea about being English and that makes you different to everybody else. Mm. Um, whereas I tend to think we're all human beings. I think yeah. that's what I'm we're yeah. all human beings and we all think 
that, that our way of doing things is usually the best. And, and yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. No? yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Right. I can't see any more questions now. Is there anybody else who would like to come in? Uh, comments, questions? No, I think this has been very comprehensive, actually. Yeah. Yes, we've learned it. We've learned a lot, including, <laughs> including, of course, um, uh, you know, taking another look at our own government system, which which we yeah. sometimes think isn't isn't doing all that mm -hmm. good either. Yes. No, we do argue with envy. I I seriously mean that because you you seem to be far more rational in the way you go about things in, in, in and yes. more, yes. more organized and more stable. Yes, um, whereas yes. we are lurching about um, our reaction to some things is, is appalling, um, how we've dealt with the, the COVID crisis, the amount of money that has been spent on things by several, central government to get nothing, the, no. the contracts well, that have been given to their friends, yeah, billions yeah, well, of pounds um, worth, yeah. terrible. Yeah, I'm not so sure what we can be terribly proud of how it's been managed in this country. Um, but I mean, <laughs> we talk about constitutions. I mean, we're, we're still quite yes. proud of the of the 1949 constitution. Yes. If you actually read it carefully today, there was a lot in there that where one would feel it, you know, it really should be changed and it really mm. should be reworded and so on. Because there's some, there's some very odd bits in there too. Yes. But no one wants to touch it. No one wants to touch it. And and after all, um, uh, um, in 1990, when German unification um, mm. came around, the government was 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 absolutely terrified of the idea of having a new constitutional convention, which actually mm. was called for in the in the constitution. Um, yes. So they invented this very sort of complicated procedure of the of of the, the, the what what was called the new states joining the federal republic the snag was that the, these new states didn't actually exist when they joined so it was it was a very odd arrangement sort of um, you know, politically but it was because people were were, were really afraid um to um uh to to sort of revisit the whole issue of of a constitution yes, mm. yes i think um uh, something if you look at the american constitution um that is a problem for them yes. the, the amendments to it the system that they have for amending it yeah. it is a problem but, it, but to be honest not having a constitution while um it, it could be seen in some circumstances to have a, a what what we would term gray areas so you don't have anything written down you can kind of fudge around them and that, mm. that can be helpful sometimes but it means you have no protections whatsoever Yes. And that's what we are finding at yeah. the moment, that we don't have any rules about things like if you hold a referendum, you need to have a majority, a super yeah. majority to pass something. So we, we, we've shot ourselves in both feet um, um, yeah. Yeah. Saying, with, with Brexit. Um, uh, uh, and I think it's the chickens are coming home to roost at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To, to, yeah. on, on that, yeah. it's been hidden by the problems of, of COVID. Yeah. Um, but but we are doing so much worse than other people uh, 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 managing things. I mean, mm. lorry drivers are in, in short supply everywhere, but the acute shortage in the UK is terrible. We have no hospitality yeah. workers, yeah. a much more acute shortage than elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. but of course, I mean, the, the, the only people that, that we now find are doing really well are those that we were always tended to sort of rather patronize and look down on the Portuguese, the Italians, yes. you know, where we always thought, you know, they're, they're, you know, yes. they're so chaotic, they'll never get anything done. They're doing extraordinarily yes. well. They've done, they've really yes. got it. Yeah. Yes, they have. Yeah. They have. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's politics. Yes, <laughs> it is. Yes, well, it's a tough Tough yes. 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 Well, <laughs> thank you. Thank you very, very much indeed. This has been, no, no this has been great, uh, great to hear um, what the plans are. And mm -hmm. um, um, yes, ah, um, uh, and I hope, I hope that mm -hmm. you know eventually that you'll at least get as far as the constitutional convention. Then I'm yes. sure a few things will change because a few more compromises will have to be reached. But, yes. Um, but yeah, I hope so. probably bring things forward. And, yes. and I wish you luck with your new government. And um, 
Yes. We shall see what happens. I mean, I'll, I'll, we have sister parties involved in that as well. So uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're interested. We take an interest in, in yeah. Yeah, it. Yes, at the moment, what I think everybody's curious what's going to happen. Yes, what's going to yes. Look, well, uh, they've made some good announcements from our yes. point of view. Yes, um, yes, yes, yes. And, and uh, nobody, mm. nobody, even sort of basically conservative people are not used, not mm. terribly frustrated or anything. You know, everybody, no. everybody's sort of curious to see what, what's going to what, yes. what's going to happen yeah. yes which is perhaps yes. a good thing yeah yes Indeed. okay thank you very much Prue. it's been delightful thank, uh, thank you. you for for um, um really sort of making us see the point of 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 of, of all this work yes. and we wish you the very best of luck thank you and it's been a pleasure thank, thank you. you very much thank you bye bye bye, -bye. bye.